Hello, sages and newcomers. I am Indigo Sage and Awakened Soul, and I welcome you all to this new series. It's sort of a book club. What I'm going to do is recap books, the sections that I find highly interesting. And at the very end, I am going to do a very short and quick, quick and short tarot reading. Okay. There's no particular spread. I'm just going to ask the question that I have in mind while I'm recapping, you know, this section. So this is my very first time doing this. Hopefully I can, you know, do it with someone else sometimes. And, um, what I would like to ask is for little forgiveness this first time because it was extremely long, so I cut out some parts. So it may sound a little choppy. Overall, I hope you guys enjoy. All right, all right, and what? All right, let me tell y'all something. I am coming at you with a quick take, and it is on this book. Not all diamonds and rosé, you know, and went ahead and got it as an ebook. I started reading it from the beginning, but then um, I started jumping around, okay? I had to jump around. I jumped around. So, I am coming at you with tarot pieces of not all diamonds and rosé. And this is a new series, so new series alert. Tarot pieces of will be book reviews whenever I do them. All right, this is my first, so bear with me. And uh, tarot is going to come at the end. I'm going to talk about a portion of the book that I want to talk about. And then do tarot on what I want to know. Okay. Yeah. Listen here. When we, especially when we get to the tarot part, I am going to go fast and it is going to be much different than what I've done in the past when it comes to tarot. That I'm not going to read the book. I'm going to discuss the book and I may or may not include quotes, um, but you know, you, you know, I, and I will paraphrase. All right. Now, um, again, this new series is Tarot Pieces of Not All Diamonds and Rosé. Now, that book can be substituted with any book that I may, you know, decide to review. It'll be Tarot Pieces of, so on and so forth. Now, let's begin because let me tell you something. When I got, I went ahead and skipped around, like I said, and I got to Royal Housewives of Atlanta. <sighs> this book, you guys, um, it is good. It is worth a read if you are a true housewife fan. Um, and I'm going to tell you something. I am a housewife fan. Um, but this is, this is a lot. Okay? Okay. This is a lot. Um, I am focusing on Sheree Whitfield. And, you know, I read this piece and had to ask, what the hell is her problem? I did. I had to ask. Because she comes out, and of course, I know that there's editors and stuff, but, you know, I'm not getting ready to give nobody no excuses on nothing when it comes to this book. I This is about Sheree. And what the F is her problem with Nene? Okay. What is her problem? She came in the door with problems with Nene. And and it's just, it blows my mind how, it always blows my mind how far people can be. Here's the thing. It starts out. Um, you know, trying to lay the footwork or whatever, uh, they were saying that, you know, they basically, they wanted a black, a black housewives show. Okay. Um, and so they thought this was perfect. 
and they have producers talking first. And one of them says that the center of them all, all of the ladies of Atlanta, was NeNe Leakes. Okay. And we know that to be true. I mean, we saw it. And then we have good old Mr. Cohen coming in saying that NeNe was the anchor. All right. And that's what we know to be true. Then they bust out with this right after that. Sheree Whitfield. She begins to talk about someone who must be a producer. So this person was looking for women who lived a certain life behind the gates. And so Sheree is saying that that's why she thought of me. Then she goes on. Now, first of all, this is already discrediting what we know that Nene has said. Nene said that she that Sheree got on the show because of her. Sheree said, no, I did not. Um, they called me and I interviewed just like everybody else. And Nene was like, well, that's because I gave them your name. Now, at this point, I'm wondering who, who y'all with? Who y'all rocking with? Do you believe Sheree when Sheree says Nene had nothing to do with it? Or do you believe that Nene gave them uh, Sheree's name. All right. Sheree goes on to say that Nene was not living that lifestyle. And she says she lived in an apartment that was not behind the gate. But she says basically, she implies that she just, um, the reason why she was a sinner is because she just took over. She just took over. And that she had a big blonde wig. Now that's quote unquote, quote, big blonde wig, unquote. And she says that um, she didn't even look like anybody living that, that lifestyle, the upscale lifestyle, with that big blonde wig. Honey. Then she goes on, Sheree goes on to talk about the friendship or lack thereof with Kim and Nene and said she implies that they were faking it because she said that they weren't even talking. They hadn't been talking for months because Nene was a um, real estate agent, uh, which is something new to me. She said um, that she was in real estate. Let me let me take that back. I believe she said in real estate. So, I don't know what that means. Of course, I assumed real estate agent. But, uh, and this is another tea that Sheree dropped. That uh, uh, Kim Zosian had more than one big papa. I didn't know that. And if y'all knew that, drop it down in the comments, okay? Anyway, she had more than one big papa. And her original, she said her original big papa... Um, they had broke up and he told her to get, get out of his house or whatever. And so she said that Nene tried to become friends with him so that she could sell his property that her friend Kim was just kicked out of. And so Sheree just, you know, uh, shits all over Nene's character. All right. Now, I don't know if any of this is true. I wasn't there. I'm just telling y'all what she's saying in this damn book. Okay, some of the stuff she's saying in the book. And um, what else we got? So she was saying that that's the reason why they were not friends when the show started. Now she says that, but then she goes on to say they had just made up when the show started. Okay, so I'm like, Sheree, you already a liar because... You, you know, it's a whole little section where you talk about they wasn't friends, they wasn't friends, they wasn't friends. And then you say, uh, she says that they weren't friends when the show started. Then she says they were, they just became friends when the show started. Anyway, girl, you just straight. But that sounds like haterism to me. And uh, she says that. She implies that they basically picked him up out of a restaurant. Okay. You'll have to get the book to see what I'm talking about. Um, now, going on to 
Sheree was on Real Housewives of Atlanta seasons one through four with no break. I believe it was season four reunion. But that's when Nene was telling her, that's the reunion that Nene was telling Sheree that Sheree had got on the show because of her, Nene. And that's when Sheree was fighting back saying, no, I got on because of me. Well, so they were happy to have Atlanta because it opened them up to an entirely different audience. Quote, female African-American viewers who were completely underserved at that time by our channel. End quote. They wanted the female African American viewers. All right, now we're on to Mr. Carlos King. It was his first time in this type of producer role. He said he had no experience with reality TV. The only thing that he knew of reality TV, in his mind, the way that this show was explained to him, it was going to be like The Hills. I've never watched The Hills. Um, I, I, that's not my type of show. But from my understanding, it was like a scripted reality TV show which those two things should not ever go together. However, there are shows these days where they do go together. But anyway, this was way back when. I forgot, 2008, I want to say. Um, so, Carlos King is talking about what he says is that each woman, each housewife, has an assigned producer. And he was assigned to Nene. And he said that as soon as he met her, that they fell in love with each other, okay? And soon after that, as soon as cameras got rolling and stuff, his friends always asked him, why does Nene talk like him and why does she act like him? So, in which um, a lot of us probably have heard Carlos King say this before, that Nene got all of that from him. Apparently, she admired um, the way he spoke and his mannerisms, and she copied him. That's what he's saying. She copied. She took it from me, okay? Uh, and, you know, we don't, I don't know, and if, if y'all ain't her best friend, you don't know either. Because, so this falls under the category of me not quite understanding it, but I mean, he says that she took it from him, and, and I'll never know because I didn't know her before the show. So if she didn't used to act like that, and then she met him and copied him, then yeah, it sounds like she did take it from him. And I, His friends questioned him about why she was copying him. And now Sheree says that Nene was being fake and she was acting like someone that she went in wanting to act like someone who wasn't, she wasn't being herself. And that she has always faked, basically. And this is not a quote, okay? I'm paraphrasing. Um, but she's saying that she's always faked her lifestyle and her personality. It's not her. That's never been her. Now, that's what uh, Sheree, Sheree, Sheree is saying. She's been gone so long, I don't know how to pronounce her damn name no more. Now, Sheree is talking about how close her and Carlos have been. And he, she says that she told him at the end of their season one, that he created a monster within Nene. Okay? And let me, oh, and the book is quoted. So let me quote this. Sheree says that she told Carlos at the end of season one, quote, you have created a monster, end quote. And she was talking about Nene. And that it's only going to get worse from here. Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> and there was bad blood between Nene and Sheree. From the start, this is the editor's note. 
and it said that the producers learned that when they, um, <laughs> the first day of filming when Nene was left off, left off of the list. Now, all of the producers swear, and they have their stories of them swearing that they had no idea that Nene's name was not on the list. And, and I mean, they're defending that adamantly as if people have been accusing them for years. Um, I haven't been an accuser, but I can only imagine they probably were being accused for years about that being a setup. Not even by Todd to come at her with the bullshit because Todd wasn't even there yet. So that wasn't no setup by Todd now. Um... But anyway, so uh, uh, producer after producer, you know, they deny, 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 deny that they did not know. They act like they thought that they was cool. And I think Nene obviously thought they was cool, too. I mean, the only person who knew they weren't cool sounded like it was Sheree Sheree. A fashion show with no fashions. Okay, when are we going to get to that? But um, I'm just giving y'all this part. Then, so they had that. So that happened. And they said that Nene broke the fourth wall when that happened because she said something about, um, I'm here. <laughs> this ain't funny. <laughs> she said, I'm here filming this show. I got cameras follow following me. <laughs> and y'all not going to let me in, you know. And the security said, no, ma'am. You are not on the list. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. That was crazy. Um, that's crazy. Now, then they go on to say, well, Sheree's, um, you know, Sheree's been asked about that if she knew. Now, earlier, like, you know, she says, no, no, she didn't know. She had no idea, blah, blah, blah. That was an accident, blah, 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 blah. Then, quote, Sheree says about it, quote, I gave them good TV. How about that? End quote. Okay, Sheree. Okay, Sheree. Okay, Sheree. Girl, Sheree. Um, so, here's the thing. Here's where they were, what got them upset. Because they used to be friends. And where it went wrong at. And Sheree, she is so dirty in this book. And it's aimed at Mimi. Oh my God, it's sickening. But she disses Nene so much. The vitriol that comes and spews out of her mouth for me is unbelievable. Because, you know what? Okay, y'all. All right, you guys. I am just going to put it the way I want to put it. I'm going to say it like this. They are both strong, intelligent. What? Black women. I don't know when's the last time they talked to each other. Get over it. Get the H E double L over it. Get over it. And I would say that that's for both parties. However, I haven't heard Nene talk about Sheree in a long time. Now, you know, I can get my eyes busted wide open, and you know, if I t flip up a couple of other pages, but right now we're just doing this because I did a reading on this. I did a reading on why did Sheree come in? Because Sheree, from her own words, she came in with like ill feelings towards Nene in the show. So Sheree says that. Basically, Nene never had the hookup, and she was Nene's hookup, and because, again, she says Nene was never living that lifestyle, and I'm going to tell you something, whether she was or wasn't, she's come a long way, and her fans see it and appreciate it, 
just that, just on GP, just on GP, okay, so don't knock it, like, what's the problem, is the problem, Sheree, that you haven't come a long way, is that the problem, like, you stayed exactly where the hell you was, and probably went into debt, because I had heard that she couldn't pay them contractors, and that's why I took Chateau, show nothing, so long to get fixed, built, girl, knock it off, but that couldn't be it because I'm I'm I channeled the energy when they just farted when they just walked their fancy asses on the television screen. So you know Chateau Sheree wasn't even you know messed with yet. wasn't no brick thrown at it yet. Um. Anyway, so here's the issue. Here's the thing. So she she said that Nini used her for getting in all the hot spots places because Nini was not invited. She was invited, and one time she was invited to some kind of big huge event, and um, Nini, and she had a plus one, and Nini was mad at her for not taking her as her plus one, and that was their blow up. And she said Nini didn't talk to her no more after that. Then she goes on to say. And this was weird to me because, well, then she goes on to say, Nene wanted me to, now this is the same thing, the same incident that she's talking about. She, one habit that I've seen and noticed with Sheree in this book, she'll say one thing and then as she progresses with talking about that same incident, it'll morph into something slightly different. So, for example, this is the perfect example for that. Sheree says that Nini got upset and stopped talking to her because she had a plus one and did not invite, did not use that plus one on Nini. Okay. Then as she continues to talk, she says Nini wanted her to put her name on the list, to get her name on the list. Um, with her and her husband, Greg, may he rest in peace, and two other guests. She didn't say the other guest's name. And so Sheree starts cussing in here and says that's for additional people, you know, besides her and her one, because she, Sheree had a, she already chose her plus one. And so she said, you know, heck, no, I'm not doing that. And she never spoke to me again. Okay. That don't sound right to me. So <clears throat> that led me. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now what that led me to do. Get out my cards. It led me to get out my cards. And I just went ahead and used... The regular right away, okay. Right away, here we go. Okay, so the question that I asked Spirit for this um, very pointed and short tarot reading was what was the animosity what's behind the animosity or the feelings that Sheree had towards Nini when she first started the show and I mean not asked for one court I got five and I took them I took them all and here's why. So the very first one out is the star. And you know what? When I tell you I'm not surprised, I mean exactly that. She wanted to be the star. Okay? She wanted to be the star. Sheree wanted to be the star. Sheree wanted to be the star. Sheree is the type that feels like she's the star. And... She's not um, hiding it. To me, she kind of reminds me of Crystal Minkoff's energy, except Crystal Minkoff hides that part of her. Crystal Minkoff also feels like she's 
a star, but she'd rather pretend like she doesn't feel like she's the star, but really she does. Sheree is, they have similar qualities, but Sheree will, will tell you she's the star, okay? That's the difference. So that's why the star came out. That was her energy going in that she's the star. The way that relates to Nini is because there was insecurity there that Nini was going to be the star. So she came in with competition, feeling competition. And two things in the book that supports that is her saying that um, something about Nini, that's not her personality. You know, she doesn't have a big personality. All that was fake. Um, okay. And then when she said she didn't live behind the gate, she lived in some apartment. Um, and then three things. Then she told Carlos King, you created a monster. All this is because of the star card. All of that, all of that. And this is the first one popped out. Pop pow, popped out. She wanted to be the star. And so she came in already. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say it. Indigo was going to say it. She was jealous of Nini. She came in being not necessarily. Let me, okay. Spirit is telling me to clarify. I'm not saying <laughs> she was jealous of so far as like material wise. And I hope my audience and um, subscribers and sages listening and newcomers listening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you guys understand when I say or anyone for that matter says that someone's jealous, it doesn't necessarily mean in a materialistic way. I do not believe that Sheree was jealous of Nini in the beginning in a materialistic way. I think it was just her big personality, Nini having a big personality, which is why she kept saying she does, that this is fake and she ain't got no big personality. All right. Now, um, under that card was that also wanted to come out and I let it on out. Reverse six of cups, six of cups. Upright is nostalgia and thinking of like friendships and old relationships and like fondly thinking of them. This was in reverse, which means the opposite of that in this case. So she wants to be the star and she ain't tripping about their friendship that they had at all. That's her energy coming in. And I'm going to say this before I move on um, to the other cards is I think Nini didn't feel this way. I think Nini did want to be friends. I think Nini thought that they all were her friends. I don't think Nini knew that Sheree... I felt this way because basically, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. In this reading right here, this reversed six of cups is a F U and F R friendship. F it. It's a strong F all of that. She's coming in as the star. So, and, and, and if I got to step on your neck, Nene, I'm going to do that. So F all of these old memories where we was cool, uh, you're, you know, we in competition now. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like Sheree showed Nene like a part of herself that either one, maybe Nene never seen, or two, Nene didn't think that that part of Sheree would be aimed at her, even if she did see it. Moving right along. This is the energy. So, the two previous cards were, like, her intention, because uh, I just asked Spirit to just show me. Um, I didn't even have a, a, a spread. I just said, show me, um, or asked. I didn't say I asked. And so, the first two cards, the previous two cards were, they represent her intention, all right? And, oh, suck it, suck it. now, Spirit just clarified more. The Six of Cups. 
not only, you know, what I just said, which was she ain't paying attention to that, but it's also in reverse to make it seem like their friendship wasn't all that. To belittle it, to like downplay, downplay it. Shut up. That's crazy. Because here's the thing. Here's the reason why I'm saying that's crazy. If you have to downplay it, then that means it wasn't small and it wasn't insignificant. If you have to downplay it. Oh my, oh my. Six of pentacles reversed. Now this is a charity card. This is energy. This is cutting someone off of charity. Like you get nothing from me. Which that rolls in so smoothly with that reverse six of cups. The six of cups is the one I just got done talking about, which is, you know, I'm going to pretend like it was nothing. I'm a, you know, we ain't got nothing, no past. It was nothing. We, we ain't never been that cool. This charity card now, you know, in the book, she makes it seem like her inviting Nene to that Nene would call and beg, practically beg her to go to these parties and um, <laughs> would beg her to go to these parties. And, uh, you know, it was like she made it seem like she was a charity guy. And so her energy is no more charity. Moving right along, temperance, upright, temperance is balanced. She wants it to be even. All right. So basically she said, Nene, you're going to have to work for it. I'm not getting. Oh, shut up. Spirit just showed me this because Sheree is saying I'm not getting you into. Yeah, we can start this show, but you will not um, come in on these events off of my back anymore. You have to work for it. That's why this charity is in reverse. Because Sheree felt like it was ch charity because she made it sound like Nene was begging her in the book to, uh, you know, put me on the list. And she saw that as charity and that she would do it. And she even called her names out, her name, like cuss word names. I was like, ooh, uh-uh. Girl, what is your problem, Sheree Whitfield? Jeez. Anyway, no more charity, and for it to be balanced, basically, she's saying, you know, you're on your own. Let's see how you, okay, Spirit is saying, let's see how you do on your own type of thing. This third card is simply, uh, Sheree, and I'm not going to break down the image, but basically, this is someone being bound only by themselves unbeknownst to them, okay? But they feel like other outside sources or outside reasons, outside situations, outside issues, outside people are the reason why they're bound when really in reality, they're only bound by themselves and they're not bound at all. Now, this one underneath all of this is saying that she felt this is where the insecurity and intimidation comes in because Needy's personality, she felt, was going to overshadow her and, you know, she wouldn't be able to get out there the way that she wants to. She wouldn't be able to be the star that she imagines herself to be. And so she felt like she was tied by... Um, Nini's personality, that she's not going to be able to be, well, like I just said, the star that she wants to be. All right. We can drop down in them comments because y'all know I can go on and on and on. I'm, so we can get down in the comments if you want clarity, but I didn't want this to be long. And right now I do want to ask that you guys go ahead and like and subscribe, please. I will continue as I go throughout this book, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Um, I got the ebook. The ebook says it's it's almost ten hours to read, and that's fine. Um, we're down one hour. Okay. So um I'll continue with these and sometimes I'll discuss it with other YouTubers, hopefully, you know. But um I had to 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 bring you guys the um tarot pieces of all right, tarot pieces of this book. Get into it. But be sure to like, 
and subscribe. And I want to thank you so much for your support. All right. And click that bell so that you're notified and share. Be sure to be safe and wash your hands. Bye.